Welcome, baseball fans, to week 16 of Major League Baseball Power Rankings. So we've had a fun week, as every week is fun. Some highlights for you. The best week is 7-1. The worst week was 0-5. We've had the largest fall was 7. The highest climb was 4. And we've had 21 teams move at least one spot. So let's go ahead and get into it. Before I get started, quick housekeeping. Um, normally I try to film this stuff at like 6, 7 in the morning before my daughter wakes up. This morning my daughter decided to wake up at 6 a.m. So sorry for the late recording, but I had to wait till she took a nap because she's a rambunctious little three-year-old. And forget about trying to give you some free time. <laughs> it's all good. Love her to death. It's all good. Um, also, because it's been um, sunny all day long, uh, the air con had to be turned off because otherwise it interfered with the audio and the video. So, as a result, if you see me grab some water from time to time, please forgive me. It is a little warm in this room and better to stay hydrated and healthy. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Coming at number 30, the Detroit Tigers. Same spot as last week, they had a 1-6 week going into Cleveland and getting their butts swept, then playing at home against Toronto and getting their butts swept. Their saving grace was winning the season finale last year, Sunday. Having said that, um, this team I would love to see perform better. Unfortunately, they managed to dethrone the number 29 team for worst in the baseball, being the Baltimore Orioles. The Orioles, same spot as last week, went 2-3, 1-1 and one and one split against Washington, 1-1 one one split against Baltimore. The fact that they could take, eat whether it's home or not, considering how abysmal Boston, Baltimore has been all year long, the fact that they, went in, they played, got to play Boston and took a game, hats off. I'll tip my cap to you, you did a good job. I'll take the good positive where I can get it. As for the rest of the season, Sorry, uh, the Orioles are at least, at least not last place, but they are very much rebuilding, and they, if anybody wants anybody uh, at the right price, they'll probably sell John Means or anybody else who wants, who, who will um, bring them in prospects. They're building up. Coming at number 28, falling one spot from last week, the Miami Marlins. Go 2-1 against San Diego, go into L.A., and go 1-1. One one. The fact that the Marlins defeated the Dodgers in L.A., I tip my cap to you. You went in to the juggernaut that is Major League Baseball in the L.A. Dodgers, and you managed to take a game. Just like Baltimore, I tip my cap to the Miami Marlins. You managed to do something that was completely unexpected, and you're probably surprised the heck out of the Dodgers doing it. <laughs> Good job, Miami. Coming in are 27. The Kansas City Royals, also a rebuilding team, but up one spot this week after having a 5-2 week. They go ahead and sweep division rival Chicago White Sox, which are ranked higher. Awesome. Well done. Well, well done. Um, yeah. And then you uh, go into Cal Cal Cleveland. And in enemy territory, you split one and one season finale today. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and just give you a round of applause for Chicago. It doesn't matter how good either one of you are. It was a divisional game. It was a four-game set. It's very hard to win four-game series. And you just swept them out of town. Great job, Clancy. Great job. Coming in number 26, the Toronto Blue Jays. A rebuilding team full with all kinds of Hall of Famer sons. <laughs> They go into Boston and get and drop three out of four. They go into Detroit and then uh, take the first two games in the series. Um, season finale, you're probably going to drop to Detroit because they've been they just dropped two to you and they're looking for a little bit of revenge in their home court. Having said that, the fact that you took the first two games and you won the series on the road, good job, Toronto. Awesome. Well, well done. Coming in at number 25, the Seattle Mariners. Go into Oakland, drop two, go home, and take two out, or split the first two against the LA Angels. Not a lot of good to write home about, but okay, let's say this. You took a game from the LA Angels. Not exactly a top 10 team, but 
you need something to build off of, and you've had better days. It hasn't been the worst week you've ever had, but one one of four, it wasn't a great week either. Um, it's you've sold everything in your own. Let's see if you can get anybody else at, at the um, any more prospects, any offload any more talent, bring in somebody else to trade that line. This season is lost for you, dude. Sorry, but uh, it's still fun to see you at least try to compete with your division. You've got a long way to go, and you're in the last place of your division. But it's not a division that is insurmountable. Therefore, get what pieces you can to trade that line and see what you can do either to finish off the year or start again next year. Coming in at number 24, the Chicago White Sox. Third place in their division. They're down one this week. Going into Kansas City, a divisional rival, and getting swept out of town. Ouch! That hurts! But then you go into Tampa and you take the first two games of a two-game series. I guess Kansas City was just so painful, you turned on the light switch and you took the first two games against Tampa Bay. You know what? For that resilience, for that bounce back, it's, as they say in Rocky, it doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down. It matters how many times you get knocked down and you get back up. You had a disgraceful series against Kansas City and you turned around, you took the first two games against Tampa. Well done. Good job. Build on that. See if you can get the season finale and take this series, the, the series win and take that into next week. Coming in at number 23, the Pittsburgh Pirates, fourth place in the division, go into St. Louis, drop two out of three, come home against Philly, and you split the first two games. In a Pennsylvania series, which happens twice a year because they're both in the National League, and you're going to play your East versus your Central at home and away every year, I still think that Pittsburgh versus Philadelphia always brings its own unique intrigue because you've got the West uh, Pennsylvanians versus the East Pennsylvanians and Phillies versus Pirates. And I'd be very interested to see who wins the series and finale this week. The fact that you won the first two games to splitting them just shows that you guys are playing well and you're relatively evenly matched at this point. Yes, I realize that Philadelphia is far more stacked team, but you're keeping things interesting. And what I've been saying about Pittsburgh all year, all year long is you don't know which Pittsburgh team is going to show up. Is it going to be the one that plays Philadelphia and lays an egg? Or is it going to be the one that comes in there and just knocks them around their own park? <laughs> Either way, it makes for a lot of fun as a baseball fan. Because then, because it, it takes doesn't matter how good the other team is, you don't know which Pittsburgh team is going to show up, and that's always like um, rolling dice. It's so much fun. Coming in number twenty-two, the Colorado Rockies. The Rockies have one of the worst, but not the worst, record this week, going 1-6, and six, going, uh, having San Francisco come into town, getting swept, then going on the road to, to New York, and dropping the first two games. Now, granted, they are well on their way to winning the season finale against New York, and I get that. But for this week, your only win was last Sunday. You lost six straight. For a team in which with I have been watching throughout the year, and I peg you at a team that is within striking distance of the wild card, and I predicted that you were going to turn it on at the end of the year, and you are going to become a surprise wild card team, taking out, taking out whoever else you get matched up against, home or away, then go into L.A. and actually dethrone the presumed champions. Presumed because they're just kicking butt at left and right. But Colorado, I think, is going to be a surprise wild card this year. And then you go and have an abysmal week going 1-6. to six. This shows that you need some work. Your offense is struggling. Your pitching is struggling. You can certainly right this ship. Let's get it done. I want to see what you can do. So, before we go to the next team here, I apologize. I'm not very cooth to uh, be drinking on f f film, but like I said, it's water, it's hot, it's all good. Coming in at number 21, the Cincinnati Reds. 
coming in, they're fifth in their division, so they are struggling like mo all of these teams here. Like Pittsburgh, they're hit and miss. The difference is they've actually been ranked previously, and they've gone on runs. This week was just not one of them. They're down one this week, having going into Chicago, drop two out of three, come home against St. Louis, drop two out of three, both divisional rivals, dropping four out of six, not good Cincinnati. If you want to get into this playoff picture, if you want to get into this wild card picture, if you want to make things interesting, and if nothing else, play a spoiler, two out of four, or, or dropping two out of four against your division is not going to get done. Come on, Cincinnati, you're better than this. Shape up, all right? Now, the best team this week is San Francisco Giants. They managed to climb out of the cellar of power rankings into the middle of the conversation here. Middle of the conversation, they are in striking distance of the wild card. They're not there yet. But they opened up enough eyes after go going into Colorado, sweeping them, then coming home and taking the first two out of three from the New York Mets with the series finale today. This is t it doesn't really matter. It would be great if they won the series finale against, against New York, but even if they split that, it's still a success. Win time, splitting or winning a series is what you got to do. So the fact that they had a phenomenal week, they win seven out of eight games played. Seven days, yes. They play a doubleheader. Hence the four-game sweep against the Colorado Rockies. One of them was a makeup game from a rainout earlier this year. But they had such a phenomenal week that they went from short fire sellers and actually actively shopping Bumgarner to stalling talks outright on Bumgarner saying, hey, we had a phenomenal week. Maybe we don't want to sell after all. Maybe we're in a striking this is a wild card. Maybe, just maybe, we can build on this and make a run. Ha ha ha. What do you know? So congratulations to San Francisco for having the best week. Coming at number 19, the New York Mets. Speaking of playing the Mets, the Mets go into Minnesota, win the first two, then play San Francisco and drop the... Uh, uh, yeah, I think I mentioned that the uh, when the San Francisco played New York, that was at home. Um, I probably if I didn't mention that, but with New York, they go on the road this week. They take two from Minnesota. They drop two out of three to San Francisco, and that shows how hot and cold they are for a Minnesota team that is tearing up the Central and on virtually on cruise control to win the AL Central title to go in to Minnesota and take the first two games. That shows great potential. Then they go into San Francisco and drop two out of three. It shows how the Mets are. They have a lot of potential. They have a lot of great talent. What they're not doing is playing consistently well. They show it as Minnesota. They can play on fire. Then they go into San Francisco and show they can also not play on fire. So, coming at number 18, the San Diego Padres. The Padres are in last place in the division. This, I think, is the last divisional... And you got the uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, that I think is the last um, fifth place team on the board here. And that is actually pretty high ranking for a fifth place team. But they're also not necessarily that horrible. Do they have a horrible week? Yes. Going one and five, going into Miami, dropping two out of three, then going into Chicago and dropping the first two is absolutely abysmal for a team with which is trying to load their team with Hosmer, with Machado, with everybody else that they have. Um, pardon me if names escape me off the top of my head. But this is a team that came into the season with a lot of promise and now they are just sort of treading water at the bottom of their division. Uh, they've got a lot of talent, they haven't made it work this year so far. Now granted, they, they, in the first couple quarters of the season, they were up here. But where you are at the end of the season is what matters. So, coming at number 17, the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cardinals 
Our third place in the division, talk about a jump from fifth to third. <laughs> but um, they play like, the Pittsburgh taking two out of three. They go into Cincinnati, take two out of three. Fundamentally, they took four out of six games. It wasn't against us, all division rivals. Cincinnati was the Pittsburgh. Yeah, both Pits, both of them were division rivals. So four out of six against division rivals. That's exactly what you gotta do. Well done. You had a solid week, St. Louis. You did what you had to do. The thing is, you're down here, not up here, because you didn't do that consistently throughout the year. You have the potential, you have the talent. I, but the thing is, every team here has potential. I want to see on the field, St. Louis. I want to see what you can do consistently here. You've got Goldschmidt, you've got uh, Walker, you've got Carpenter, you've got solid players here. Let's put it together. Because otherwise, you're going to be watching the postseason from the couch. All right, coming at number 16, the Texas Rangers. And the Texas, unfortunately, had the worst record of the week, going 0-5, losing all five of their games this week, the, um, going up, dropping their season finale on the Sunday, then dropping two to Arizona and two to Houston. Now, one could argue that teams that were two, the two teams in Colorado and Detroit that went one of six worse because they lost more games. But here's the thing: they also won a game this week. Texas is considered the worst this week because they didn't win any of them—a clear five-game sweep. The only thing worse would be going to seven. Which, oh, what do you know? Colorado did that once. So, Texas being. In third place in their division, also has the largest fall of anybody. The Giants having the largest climb of four. They had the largest drop of seven ranks. You fell clear out of the top ten and even below the fifteen here because of your abysmal week. Given saying that, you can always turn around by starting to win next week. So we'll see what happens. Coming in number fifteen, the Arizona Diamondbacks go into Texas and take the first two. They come home against Milwaukee and drop the two out of three. This is a team that is so horribly inconsistent, it's almost sad. Because they can go into Texas with whom I beat up on them. Granted, they had a bad week, but they still won the games. Then you go in against Milwaukee, who is in a dogfight with the Cubs for the Central, and you drop two out of three. Not a great week for Arizona. At the same time, they're not out of the picture yet either. I, they could very easily be a surprise player come wildcard team. Everybody in, in the Central or in the NL West, um, other than the Dodgers, are pretty much in wildcard mode. Let's see if we pretend, let's get to that game and then play and see what happens in the playoffs against the Dodgers. The Arizona Diamondbacks are not playing well enough to make a difference there, but anything can happen. Let's see what happens. This is a bad week. You brush it off. You, you come again next week. Coming at number 14, the Philadelphia Phillies. The Phillies are in third spot of division. They hang 10 against LA. Talking about taking on the juggernaut of the NL West. And even, yes, it was home field advantage. And I'll take any advantage I can get when you're playing the LA Dodgers. But you split the first two games. No shame in that. Four game set, very, very hard to win four game sets. So the fact that you split the series, home or not, you know what? I'll take it. Take it all day long. You don't want to, obviously, you don't want to end up with a, you know, an 81 81 record for the whole season. But most series are three games. When you get your four game sets, you got to split. It's all good. Move right along. Speaking of which, they then go up against Pittsburgh and split that series. So they had a very, very, all things considered, average week. Getting their season finale and then splitting. It's all good. Last week, there were some teams on the road who split every series and it looked bad on paper compared to how they're doing the rest of the previous, uh, in previous weeks. But... Any team that can go in and, take, and do a two-game set, a four-game set, and split for the week, you take it, and you march right along. No shame in that. Splitting a four-game or an even-game series, it is what it is. 
here's the thing. Philadelphia has not been playing up to their potential lately, and I've been hearing from Philly fans a lot how they need to be higher ranked and they need to win more games, and yada yada yada. Totally get it. Hopefully, the fact that you were able to fend off Pittsburgh, you were able to fend off LA, getting splits there, you hopefully you take the season finale and you take that into next week and you build on that. Let's see you win some more games. You certainly have the ability to do so between Araneta, Nola, Harper, Ramudo. I mean, I can go through the whole lineup. It really doesn't matter. What matters is, is the play on the field, getting the job done, and I know you can do it. Coming in number 13, the LA Angels. They uh, split a four game series against the uh, division rival, Houston Astros, and then split against the Seattle Mariners with the season finale today. So the fact that you, they, just like Philadelphia, have won 3-3 three three this week, getting the season finale last Sunday, uh, you know what, I'll take it. You know what, it wasn't a stellar week, but also wasn't a horrible week. It was very even, average week, you took even games, and you split them. It's all good, it's all good. Take the season finale today, and move on forward. You're not out of the picture entirely yet. Let's see what you can do with it. Coming in, number 12. Or the Washington Nationals. Fix that logo here. There we go. The Washington Nationals go into Baltimore and split. They go into Atlanta and take two out of three. This is a tale of two cities with Washington. They go into one of the worst teams in baseball and their cross rivalry. Now, because the um, Baltimore DC is an annual intercity rivalry, like like New York and um and, and New York, or LA and LA and what have you, typically these series usually split, and it usually doesn't mean much of anything towards the grand scheme of things. However, if you're looking at things outside of the, the the geographical rivalry, the fact that the Washington dropped a game to Baltimore, it looks bad on them, especially in trying to compete in the NL West. As far as geographical rivalry is concerned, that's pretty much what you'd expect. You'd expect a split. and It makes fans happy, takes away bragging rights, and makes for great baseball. Where it comes into key here is they also then proceed to go down to the Atlanta Braves and take the first, and take two out of three season finale today. I'm expecting that because of the division rivalry and you're in Atlanta and you've already taken the first two out of three, I think it'd be great to see Washington take the series, the, the, the series and take three out of four against Atlanta. I suspect this is going to be a split. And there's no shame in that. If you split two even... Uh, game series, a two game, and it's in a four game. No shame in that. You take that, you and you uh, move on to the next series. It's all good. It's all good. Coming in at number eleven, the Milwaukee Brewers. The Brewers took two out of three against Atlanta. Then they go into Arizona and take two out of three. Well done. Well done. You're talking about a team that Milwaukee was in the first quarter sort of powerhouse team. Now. They're chasing the Cubs for the division. And the fact that they managed to take four out of six this week, you know what, that's exactly what you got to do. You take that and you build on that next week. You take that and you build momentum on that. Take the next series, the next series. Let's, let's, let's use this to catapult yourself. You were still in the conversation for the division and the wild card is going to be very, very hotly contested between Philadelphia, between San Francisco, between Colorado, between everybody out there. You've got like five or six teams in the conference for the wild card. The Brewers are one of the few teams that actually are, are close enough to the, to the Cubs to keep the division an option. And you definitely don't want to get into the wild card game because then you end up playing the Dodgers. And you'd rather have somebody else beat the Dodgers <laughs> if you want to try and get to a championship here. Milwaukee's been out of the picture for so many years. They really want to try and hit the, hit the Cubs and get to that position. So you're still, you still have the ability to do that. You're still close enough to close down the Cubs. You've got to take this week and run with it. Build that momentum and start getting some consistent series. Win series or series. Two out of threes, three out of fours, whatever you gotta do. So, that brings us to our top ten. Wahoo! 
Everyone loves the top 10. It's phenomenal. It's so much fun. Because we have the best of the best. The creme de la creme. The cream of the crop. The absolute best that Major League Baseball has to offer. And the top 10 are the only 10 that are covered by every single analyst and news source out there. Because a lot, very few play, places go through all 30 of them. Because at the bottom, no matter how many people care, everyone loves top 10. So, let's get into it, okay? A little bit of possible drama here, huh? Fantastic. Coming in, number 10, the Boston Red Sox. Boston takes three out of four from Toronto, splits Baltimore. The fact that they, they took care of business and they took two, three out of four against Toronto, a lowly division rival, you got the job done, well done. Then they go into Baltimore and they drop again to Baltimore. Kudos to Baltimore. Shame on you, Boston. I'm <laughs> saying, come on now. They had such a static team. They had been building up, building up, building up, building up, slowly edging their way up. And now they finally got into the top ten. They're finally in the in the picture of a, of top teams. I wouldn't call them a league yet, but. New York and Tampa, look out. It doesn't matter that they're over 10 games behind uh, the New York Yankees. They are a game back of Tampa, and Tampa is not doing well. They are, they are, earned, they are building, climbing their way into the wild card picture, and you don't want to face Boston in the wild card. You just don't. Phenomenal work by uh, Boston in getting back into the playoff picture here and getting in the top 10. Welcome. Coming in number nine, the Chicago what, uh, Cubs. <laughs> I almost said White Sox. The Chicago Cubs. First in their division, they've been riding that for going on half a season now. After they after they leapfrogged Milwaukee, they played his home games this week, and they took two out of three against Cincinnati. They take the first two games against San Diego. They had a five and one week. They are showing why they are division leaders. They have got all the pieces in motion, and they're doing well with them. Now, they've still got dogfighting against Milwaukee, but they're not showing any signs of letting up, and that's exactly what you got to do if you want to win that division. Coming in at number eight, the Cleveland Indians had a phenomenal week, going 6-1, and one, sweeping division rival Detroit, taking the one, splitting the first two games of set. Kansas City, I have a feeling they're probably going to take the five the season finale against Kansas City, and that would be phenomenal. And then because the Giants had such a better week, they didn't get an auto mention there, but 6 to 1 is nothing like that. Phenomenal week. You, had, you did a great job, and you're well on your way to catching the Minnesota Twins. Now, the Twins are, if they have been a phenomenal team all year long, but which team is going to play there in the playoffs? That remains to be seen. Can they catch them? We don't know yet. But they're starting. They're playing well, and they're doing things they need to do to catch Minnesota. Minnesota doesn't watch out. They could be knocking on the doors here. Minnesota being 59 and 38, Cleveland comes in at 56 and 41. So you're only talking a few games back. And coming into the trade deadline, you you're you're right on the heels. You all you need a couple of uh, strong weeks, and you'll be right there. Coming at number eight, the Atlanta Braves. First in their division and they've been just kicking it since they, uh, since they leapfrogged Philadelphia. The Braves go into Milwaukee, drop the first two, uh, drop two out of three, then they play Washington and drop two out of three. Given the fact that they had a three and four week, it's not a great week and the fact that they went two and four this week season finale of uh, last week aside, not a great week for Atlanta. They do drop one because of it, but they are still in first place in their division. And with uh, Philadelphia being eight games back, they can afford to have that week and move on without having to sweat too much. And they've earned that privilege having had such a great season so far. Keep up the great work, Atlanta. Let's see what you can do when the playoffs come because I'm expecting you to finish in first place and make a run at this thing. Will you end up playing Chicago? Will you end up playing, well, you wouldn't play the uh, the Dodgers. They would be number one. Therefore, you could either end up playing 
the Chicago Cubs or the Milwaukee Brewers, depending on how well Milwaukee ends up the series. Having said that, you put yourself in an excellent position. And being at 59 of 49, uh, 59 of 41, um, versus Milwaukee being 52 wins and the Chicago Cubs being 54 wins, that definitely gives you a home field advantage and that is something you absolutely want anytime you can get it. And we're back. Sorry about that, fellas. Had to, a little bit of a technical difficulty. The heat in the room caused the phone to shut off, so I'm glad I got through Atlanta. But they cut off halfway through number six here, so we'll just redo it from scratch. Coming in, number six, the Tampa Bay Rays. The team that has pioneered and coined the opener because back before they got Charlie Morton, they only had one good pitcher in Blake Snell. Now you've got two, but you still have a phenomenal bullpen that is built around the opener strategy. The uh, Tampa Bay Rays, while being eight games back at the New York Yankees, are still very much in the playoff picture for the wild card and that anything can happen. Tampa Bay... Uh, drops three out of four to New York and drops two against Chicago. So they had a two or four week very bad for Tampa and it caused them to fall spot. But they're still very much a playoff spot. They're still game up on Boston. So it's one of those things where you you dust yourself off and you move along. The Tampa Rays are keeping themselves very, very much relevant in the wild card contests here and could make things very, very interesting in the playoffs. Coming at number five, the Minnesota Twins. The Twins dropped two to New York, dropped two out of three to Oakland. However, despite having a one in five week, they get an exciting picture coming up. They get to go ahead and see how they stack up against the division leader in the New York Yankees coming up. So we'll see how that turns out for them. The Minnesota Twins have had a phenomenal year. My concern with them is that can they turn that into playoff success? The season ended today, you'd be playing Houston, and Houston is no slouch. So this will be a great week to see how well they stack up against their division leader in the New York Yankees, and I wish them all the best of luck. Coming in, number four, the Oakland Athletics. The Athletics are in second place in the division. They had a 5-1 week, taking two out of Seattle and taking two out of three in Minnesota. So they have shown why they deserve to be in the top five, in the top ten, and in the top five, no less. They're really Mr. Climbing up the board here, and they're making themselves relevant. They're definitely in line for a wild card picture. They're, Seeing as they are in division against Houston, I think that Houston has just got a stranglehold in their division. They can make things very interesting for Tampa, whoever else they happen to play in the wild card. And they've already been burned um, playing the Kansas City in a wild card game a number of years back. They know what that taste looks like, so look out everyone for Oakland. They are coming. Coming in, number three, the Houston Astros have almost a virtual lock on the division, being that they are um, for the six games up on Oakland, and they are one game back of New York for the American League best record. They go into LA, they split the first two games, they take two out of two games, the first two games of the series against Texas in the Battle of Texas. They are every bit the team that we thought they were, they were as they uh, won the, uh, the what, they lost the ALCS last year to Boston. They won the World Series the previous year against LA. They're the team that is every bit the powerhouse they've always ever been. And being six games up, being Houston, means they're probably cruising uh, to uh, the, the National, the American League West crown. And considering 10 years ago, they were a walking joke. They had a phenomenal turnaround for a team. I give them all the credit in the world. Wonderful work. Let's see how well you do. You're looking at hosting Minnesota this season today, and I don't see Minnesota as much of a threat to you. So keep up the great work. We'll see how you do. Um, you are, I think, what is it? Um, seven points back of the number two spot. So the number two spot is closing in on the number one spot, but you're still very, very much relevant. You've got a nice, cushy six-point lead over a fourth of the fifth spots here. 
And for all newcomers to the uh, channel here, we had a lot of new subscribers. I thank you. I appreciate you. Welcome. Absolutely. I waited till the end to go to uh, cover it because I figured most people were probably going to skip to it anyway. The points are three points for nine inning win, two, uh, zero points for nine inning loss, and if you go to overtime, it's th three points, and the winner takes two, loser takes one. Having said that, you're looking at only a few games back in points on the number two New York Yankees. The Yankees have been doing everything right. They've dropped some series, but no one's perfect. They still continue to absolutely dominate at home, and that's exactly what they did this week, taking three out of four to Tampa, and taking the first two against Colorado. They will absolutely take that series win, uh, despite losing on Sunday. They had a great, great week, winning six, losing one, and they are showing why they are forced to be reckoned with. They just know how to win games, whether it's through their pitching, through their release, through their, their, their uh, lineup, they've just got everything clicking on all cylinders. Way to go, New York. Keep up the great work. Coming in, number one, the Los Angeles Dodgers have just been taking names and killing it all year long. They are a powerhouse. They are they have the best record in baseball by a couple of games, and they are on. And the fact that they took they split the first two games with Philly. At, uh, is a whatever, but they took two. They took both games against Miami, and this is a team with which has so much depth that I remember when they brought up a call up from AAA. He came in and he would hit a walk off home run. I mean, this is a team built around depth, and considering a sour taste in their mouth of having dropped two World Series in a row, but Boston last year and Houston the year before that, they are. Absolutely trying to show that they deserve to be in the World Series and they're trying to avoid the fate of the Buffalo Bills that won the Super Bowl four times and lost all four times. The Dodgers are packed, they're stacked, and they're ready to rock and roll. They want that World Series championship and they're stuck at nothing to try and get it. So let's see what happens and let's see if they can get to the World Series and actually take it. Now, if you took the two best teams in baseball, and granted, anything can happen, especially in the playoffs, but if you have the two best teams out of today in the World Series between New York and L.A., that would be vintage baseball in the, in the sense that they used to play each other every year in the World Series. Back when the league was smaller, back when L.A. was in New York, it was New York just dominated baseball. So I think a recap of that might be a nice little fitting World Series. What do y'all think? <laughs> Leave your comments in the section below. These are our 30 teams and where they rank. I want to know what you think about what I think about where everyone should rank. Should your team be higher, be lower? Tell me why in the comment section below. I'd love to hear all about it and give you my thoughts as well if you want them. Having said that, if you just happen to be browsing through the web or happen upon this, uh, this channel on YouTube, Please hit like and subscribe. It greatly helps the channel. I appreciate every single one of you tuned in every week. This has been a lot of fun to deliver this to you. And I would love to do more content for you beyond power rankings as soon as my work schedule allows it. But in the meantime, I thoroughly enjoy tracking every single team, watching as many games as humanly possible, and providing this to you every single week. Thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful day and enjoy the games.